round table right in front of the stage uh, and we're just waiting for a um, couple of minutes to have um, Lieutenant General Kandari to be here and then we start the session and it, uh, it will be um, castinated by our Lieutenant General uh, Pannu and um, we will wrap this session in another 45 minutes um, so the ground is open just give us a couple of minutes till um, uh, Lieutenant General Kandari arrives thank you in growing demand for sectors. This has transformed the sector into a vibrant collaboration and the world world of The Indian space policy is important in the relationship of the Focusing its own advanced research while new government in time support private space activities and highlights the importance of international collaborations. Italy with its and small advanced capability in satellite and space which has presents a relevant partner for a whole collaboration between Italy and India can accelerate India's space initiatives, enhance technological capabilities, and expand their presence in the global space one of you and welcome to this uh, country session Italian Space Explore India. Let me tell you in brief in the next 15 minutes what is the Italian Space Agency, what is space in Italy and uh, evidencing at the end of my talk the different uh, points of contact with the Indian space ecosystem which is uh, which are important for actual and future cooperation. First of all, about the governance of space in Italy, which is not so much different from the Indian one. Uh, the Italian Space Agency uh, directly refers to the Prime Minister or to a national uh, political authorities, as in this case, uh, which is identified by the Prime Minister. The national political authority for space is the Minister for Enterprises and Made in Italy, actually. We do have also a forum, which is an interministerial committee, which is participated by the 
most important, let's say, ministers having interest in space, together with uh, them, we define the policy uh, under the guidelines of the government, and we define also, as Italian Space Agency, <coughs> the strategic vision for the future, as well as the triennial plan of uh, activities. This is, uh, in brief, ASI. We do have our headquarters in Rome, but we do have also uh, three other nodes. One is uh, in Africa, and uh, this is the historical uh, base of Malindi, in which, uh, I should say, the Italian adventure in space started with Professor Luigi Broglio. Let me just recall to you that at that time, Italy was the third nation in the world to launch a satellite. Uh, this happened from the USA by the work done by Professor Broglio in Malinda, and after that, many other activities uh, were developed in Africa, in Kenya. Still, the base uh, is operative, and uh, we have many activities with the Kenyan Space Agency as well. We have also two nodes in Italy. Uh, one in, uh, is, uh, both are in the south of Italy, let me say. One is in Matera. And this is very important because it's uh, the, the historical space geodesy center, which is actually working also on uh, space debris issues by laser ranging instruments. And we do have also a Sardinia uh, node in which a deep space antenna is installed, uh, so mainly for research and development uh, <coughs> purpose. Uh, the uh, small town is called San Basilio uh, near uh, Cagliari. Uh, we are working as Italian Space Agency uh, uh, strictly uh, together with the European Union as well as with the European Space Agency. And just to give to you a very short idea, these are the most important programs running under the head of the European Union. This is Copernicus for Earth Observation, very well known. Galileo, uh, for what it concerns, let me say, position, navigation, and timing. Uh, then we have GovSatcom for the CQ telecommunication. And we also <clears throat> make some different proposals under the framework of Horizon Europe. They are participated not only by the Italian Space Agency, but, uh, but by, uh, by our research centers, universities, as well as uh, <coughs> industries. Uh, we work also side by side with the European Space Agency, and we are, um, as ASI, one of the founding members uh, of the European Space Agency. Uh, and actually, we are the third contributor overall. Uh, our budget, which was subscribed in the last Ministerial Council of 2022, was uh, around 3 billion of euros. Uh, as well as we are actually the first contributor in optional program. We do also ask on, uh, uh, we also host on our country uh, the, one of the most important, I should say, is a center, which is for, again, at observation, is in Frascati, near Rome, and the name is Esrin. You have a pie there in which you can see which, are, which is the budget, the amount of the budget allocated by uh, Italy in the European Space Agency activities. And as you can see, uh, without going through the, uh, the, the figures, uh, we uh, are committed for air observation program, telecommunication mm -hmm. and integrated application, space transportation, uh, <clears throat> then space safety, human and robotic exploration, as well as uh, uh, commercialization and industry and procurement. What about the uh, Italian space industry? Uh, the Italian space industry is supported by the ASI mission uh, through the uh, uh, many actions which are uh, focused for the development of the competitiveness uh, of our industries. Then I will give to you some figures more in detail on the economic, uh, on the ecosystem uh, in Italy. Uh, working also, uh, in, as I said, uh, in, inside European projects, uh, which are more focused for research and development activities uh, rather than technological acti activities. Uh, and we are also very engaged both in space diplomacy, that is uh, bilateral and multilateral relationship, uh, as well also for our industries in order to support the internationalization of our industries uh, independently from their sides. Uh, but also uh, to stimulate in our country 
uh, new companies, uh, startup, uh, for example, and this uh, is done inside a measure uh, which we define together with the European uh, Space Agency, which is called, as I tell you, I will tell you, a business incubator center. This is a very brief, uh, let me say, slide reporting the essential feature of the um, uh, Italian space ecosystem. Actually, we do have more than uh, uh, 250, I should say 300 companies uh, uh, working uh, uh, strictly in the space of field. I'm not talking about aeronautics, I'm just talking about space. And 8% uh, of them are small and medium enterprises. And then more or less, let me say, uh, the remaining is divided by large system integrator, like for example, Thales Alenia Space Italy or CDL, etc., etc and uh, start up. We do have also a very wide or very extended network uh, of uh, academic and uh, public research nodes. Actually, they cover all the, uh, all the Italian land and they are mo around 70, not 60, as it's written in this slide. And then we do have uh, three industrial associations uh, grouping all the enterprises working in the space fields five technological uh, technology cl uh, cluster which are, are regional level and they are a sort of public private partnership one national uh, cluster uh, which uh, is uh, essentially related to coordination but also in a propositive way uh, of the activities of the regional clusters five business incubator centers and then uh, our uh, agency has uh, participates as share in three companies. Uh, uh, the first one is EGEOS, which is focused uh, on uh, satellite data and observation. And this is a company between ASI and Telespazio. Then we do have Altec, uh, which is essentially focused for uh, exploration, let's say, uh, topics. And this is a company between uh, the Italian Space Agency and Thales Alenia Space Italy. And last but not least, uh, Space Lab, uh, which is a company shared by the Italian Space Agency and the Avio, which is uh, our Italian company producing Vega C, that is uh, the Italian launcher. Uh, this is uh, an idea, a graphical idea uh, on, uh, let me say, the cluster concentration of activities for what it concerns space. Uh, and uh, as you say, if you want to refer, because this is a little bit more simple to the big city in Italy. Uh, the axis is uh, from Rome, Turin, Milan, Naples, and Bari. So coming from the north part of Italy up to the mid-south uh, of, uh, of Italy. Uh, involving DAS uh, companies, which 43%, they are located in the four Italian regions they are mentioned, which is Campania, Lazio, Piemonte, and uh, Lombardia. This is at a glance, uh, a sort of representation of the activities per di divided by different categories of enterprises. So if we take the whole number of the companies, more or less one third uh, of the activities are in the upstream, one third are in the downstream area, and uh, the remaining one third, they deal both with upstream and uh, with uh, downstream. And this is more or less well reflected for the activities uh, uh, of large companies. Uh, but if we go through uh, small and medium enterprises and uh, startup, essentially, we can see how in the small and medium enterprises, the upstream activities are mm, a little bit more high developed than the other one. Uh, instead, for the startup, uh, the downstream uh, uh, is much more developed than the other two sectors. And this is very important for us uh, because servicing is one of the uh, pushing, let me say, uh, action for the new space economy. And service coming from uh, activities are in space are very important uh, uh, for us. We are also fostering uh, uh, in the space economy all, all the chain uh, which can support technological innovation, uh, we can, uh, which can support the uh, the new companies, uh, startup companies, uh, starting from <coughs> sorry research and development and ending to uh, venture capital uh, as well as uh, uh, impact evaluation on market uh, and on society. This is the uh, representation of the uh, five 
business incubator center that we have actually in Italy. This is a measure which is funded by the European Space Agency, but with uh, uh, funding coming from the Italian Space Agency. And the business incubation measurements uh, are geographically uh, tools uh, which are uh, used in order to support a startup development. So we do have one which is in Turin together with Politecnico of Turin, which is a university. Uh, one which is in Milan uh, together with Polyab, which is a foundation of Politecnico of Milan. Another one which is uh, in Padua together with a company uh, which is uh, Officine Stellari. Uh, then there is one in Rome, uh, in the Lazio region, where ASI has, uh, it, uh, is a headquarter, uh, together with Lazio region. And the last one, uh, in the south of Italy, in Brindisi, um, together with the Technological District Regional, uh, which we do have in Apulia. We are thinking about the possibility, and this will be uh, for sure in the next couple of years, uh, to set up two additional uh, big business incubator center, essentially under the line which is uh, defined by Rome Capital, that is, uh, this means in the south uh, of Italy. This is at a glance uh, the uh, um, agreements and so the collaboration that we do have both with the U uh, Italian University and as you see they are all over uh, Italy, uh, as well as uh, this represent the agreements and the collaboration that we do have with the public research uh, centers. Uh, among them, I can mention uh, the, um, the National Institute for Astrophysics, INAF, as well as uh, the National Institutes for Nuclear Physics, INFN, the NAS National Research Council, the Italian Institute of Technology, and the uh, National Institute uh, for Geophysics and Volcanology. All for their competence, uh, they are working in the space field and with them we are collaborating and also funding some activities, research or uh, technological. As Italian Space Agency, we have a lot of relationship uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the world. Uh, here, in summary, you can see some red star. The red star are countries with which we have developed a collaboration agreement, memorandum of understanding. The yellow dot, instead, uh, they represent countries with which uh, we have collaboration, but don't, not yet at the level of memorandum of understanding. As you can see, for what it concerns India, there is a red star uh, at the moment. And uh, as I told before, uh, we are very and uh, really engaged to work uh, uh, together with uh, countries, uh, European countries uh, inside the European Union, as well as countries belonging to the European Space Agency. But we rely uh, a very uh, uh, high uh, uh, importance uh, for what it concerns bilateral and multilateral country. So, uh, sorry, uh, collaboration. So we have a strong collaboration with US, with NASA. We have strong collaboration with Japan, with JAXA. We have strong collaboration with some Latin American countries. We have collaboration with African countries. Uh, we do have collaboration with uh, this community, I mean, with, uh, with India, et cetera, et cetera. So we move on, uh, on different lines because we think that space is something which is uh, important worldwide, not only for Europe or not only for uh, the European Union. A uh, very, very short review of the major space programs uh, uh, running in Italy in which uh, uh, the Italian Space Agency is involved. Let me say that Italy is uh, perhaps the only European countries which uh, can cover all the supply chain and all the domains in space. So we move from Earth observation to exploration to navigation, telecommunication, to science uh, and research and development, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Some example for what is concerned Earth observation, some very historical important still running. Uh, let me say, Italian satellite uh, with the uh, radar technology, uh, which is uh, one of the most important excellences in the world of Italy uh, is the Cosmos SkyMed constellation. Now we are the second generation. 
Then we do have also the hyperspectral satellite Prisma, which is one of the topics on to which we collaborate with the Italian, with the, with the Indian uh, community. Platino and the new constellation which is coming, uh, which is a constellation of constellation. It, it is called uh, uh, Iride, uh, which will be launched uh, by uh, 2026. It has been developed under the framework of the National Residency Plan Italian National Resiliency Plan, which was a measure defined by the European Union in order to give support after the pandemic years. And we are also involved in NGGM, uh, Next Generation Gravity Mission, which should be, will be, let me say, will be fully subscribed in the next ESA ministerial uh, next year, in 2025. Um, we can skip it. We, in, the, in the area of air observation, we do have also national program, and this is a very important and interesting uh, to us uh, national program. It is called Alcor. Uh, it is related essentially to nanosatellites. So we found as Italian Space Agency this program, which has been also uh, uh, fully appreciated by the European Space Agency uh, receiving last year an awards for the activity. And this is related to the possibility given uh, also to small enterprises, to start up, uh, as well as to the academic uh, and to the research community to test the new technology uh, on uh, uh, nanosatellites. Uh, essentially, the initial target uh, is uh, to start from a technology readiness level of six uh, to go to the, a technology readiness level of seven. So uh, they have the idea. Uh, they, uh, let's say, fabricate a payload uh, with the supervision of the Italian Space Agency, and then we uh, allow them uh, to put the satellite in orbit in order to have uh, a testing on site of the new idea of technology. And this is a national program. For telecommunication and navigation, uh, <coughs> we are prime contractorship for Galileo, the second generation. Uh, and uh, obviously, uh, we are inside the Gobsac.com uh, area for secure communication, heavy uh, dual use. Uh, and we will have also a very important role uh, in the uh, next program uh, for telecommunication around the moon, uh, which is called Moonlight. This is a measure of the European Space Agency uh, and uh, our company, Telespazio, uh, should be the prime contractor of this, uh, of this activity at, at ESA uh, level. Science uh, and exploration, I uh, had some difficulties to put everything on one slide, as you can see, but we started uh, on this field uh, from 1997 with Cassini. We are still uh, on that uh, with different uh, initiatives. Uh, let me just uh, remember uh, the most recent one, uh, which is one is ExoMars, uh, uh, which has been uh, signed uh, in the uh, beginning of 2024. That one is uh, an ESA uh, program. Thales Alenia Space Italy is the prime contractor. And uh, this program, uh, uh, by 2028, uh, uh, should uh, send the first European rover on Mars. And this rover uh, will be also equipped with a, a very important and innovative Italian driller fabricated by Leonardo, uh, which will allow to uh, take samples from the surface of Mars up to two meters in depth. So uh, facilitating, let me say, studies uh, uh, independently uh, from the extreme temperature condition that you can have on the Mars surface. All this uh, uh, and all our commitment, uh, uh, I must mention, uh, this topic uh, uh, is also one of the reasons, because of up to now, we got 14 astronauts flying. Uh, starting from the Memorandum of Understanding signed in 1997 with the National uh, with NASA, uh, and then coming to the last mission, which was, which was January 2024 on Axiom 3, uh, by the uh, Colonel Walter Villadei of the Italian Air Force. One of the topics uh, in which we have an excellence is uh, together with Rada, as I said to you before, uh, which is internationally recognized, uh, is the topic of uh, uh, 
um, pressurized structure, so let me call it in this way. We started, as I told uh, just a couple of minutes before, by the Memorandum of Understanding signed in 97 with NASA, uh, and uh, our company, which is in Turin, uh, that is Thales Alenia Space Italy, uh, was responsible for the building of more than 50% of the actual International Space Station. Then, after that, uh, we gained, they gained a lot of experience, uh, and so the activities moved and were, were developed and up, up to the, uh, these days in which uh, uh, Thales Arena Space uh, will, be, will give pressurized models to uh, Axiom for the post-ISS. Uh, uh, is inside the uh, Artemis architecture for the lunar surface module, which is called multi-purpose uh, habitation module. Uh, and then is also participating uh, uh, to the uh, lunar gateway, that is the space station uh, around the moon, not, not, uh, not around the Earth, uh, through uh, <clears throat> programs which are developed by the European Space uh, Agency. Another field in which we do have expertise uh, is the size, uh, is the access to space, that is space transportation, uh, medium size, not heavy. Uh, so apart from the European launch, uh, which had been developed by uh, Ariane Group, which is Ariane 6, uh, and uh, the, the new one, the new version, should have the Madden fly the, in the next days, on the 9th of uh, July, uh, from, from Kourou. Uh, but the Italian company, Avio, was the developer of the launcher, the medium-sized launcher Vega, then Vega C, um, and uh, now working uh, uh, for the new generation, uh, which is called Vega E. And then we do have also the measure, uh, and we are prime in ESA uh, for the Space Rider, uh, which is another program uh, related to, let me say, access uh, to space with a reusable uh, vehicle. Coming to the relationship uh, with your country, with uh, India, I would like to recall again, as I told this morning, that after the meeting uh, held in March 2023 uh, between our Prime Ministers Meloni and your Prime Ministers Modi, they decided uh, to uh, extend our cooperation and to define the collaboration between Italy and India as a strategic partnership. So we are fully committed in order to respect this agreement, which has been, with pleasure I should say, which has been taken by our two prime ministers. And we had relationships with India since 2000s, because in 2000s it was signed a framework agreement with the Indian Space Research Organization, that there was an addendum in 2005. Uh, then we had, a, let me say, a sort of a, a period uh, not so fast. Uh, but we started again in 2022 uh, by a joint declaration in 2023 in October, so just after the meeting of our two prime ministers between myself and between the, uh, the uh, responsible uh, of uh, Samanat, of the Mr. Samanat of the Indian Space Research Center, in which we decided a, three, a couple of important things. First of all, we decided to set up a joint working group in order to define the way in which we can collaborate. Uh, one is uh, something related to a historical collaboration on heliophysics, but new ones, two new ones uh, were defined in, in October, one on uh, Earth observation and one on uh, exploration. And we also decide together uh, to give a push uh, in order to let our uh, in industries to know bet better each other. So the first uh, output of the uh, joint uh, declaration that we signed in Baku in October 2023 uh, was the India Italy Space Industry Day, which was organized on December 2023 uh, by uh, the Italian Space Agency and your in space uh, with the support of ISRO. This was a, a virtual meeting, but was the starting point uh, in order to let to develop B2B meetings uh, and let to better know each other. But I'm, I'm very happy to announce to you that uh, we, uh, in early 2025, so uh, let me say less than six 
uh, months, uh, we will organize together with uh, ISDRO, within space, with the Italian Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Italian Embassy, here represented today in Delhi, as well as the Italian Trade Agency, uh, an Italian trade mission here. So we will uh, uh, bring our companies here in India, not virtually, physically, in order to uh, follow up, let me say, the virtual meeting that we organized in December to increase and to strengthen our uh, collaboration. I've finished. Thank you for your uh, attention. Let me just recall that we are organizing, as Italian Space Agency, together with the Leonardo Company and together with the Italian Association of Aeronautics and Astronautics under the supervision of the International Astronautic Federation, the next uh, International Astronautic Congress, uh, which will be held by starting from the 14th uh, up to the 18th of October 2024 in Milan. This will be a very important and huge event. We, event. we are waiting for more than 10,000 attendants. Uh, we have received uh, uh, 7,000 of abstracts. Uh, we have received uh, uh, the um, application for participation by colleagues coming from 105 different countries and 2,000 to 295 different organizations. So I would like to thank the Indian colleagues because their presence uh, will be very important. Thanking also uh, my colleague Samanato of Isro. And I would like to invite all of you, if you have not yet foreseen, to attend the meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Valente, for the insightful of uh, ASI. Now I would like to welcome Professor Sergio Leda, Scientific Attaché from Embassy of Italy in India, to tell us more about the new frontiers and challenges of the Indian Italian research in the space sector, which is Gravitational Waves, the Einstein Telescope Project. Yes, um, I use this time that um, we are loading the presentation just to thank the organized committee for this invitation. It's very nice to be in this country section from it for Italy and uh, of course uh, we after the talk of our president of Asi it's very embarrassing for me to make my contribution but anyway I, I've tried to do my best that will be just to show you because there has been already presented that how Italy is engaged in space activity is engaged very much also in research activity and uh, this engagement could be sorry we can do in the future because I think it was already mentioned what we are doing for uh, actual challenges what the way we can do it in the future so the gravitational waves Italy wants to propose the idea to make uh, a gravitational wave detector in Italy because uh, we want to use the long tradition we have in Italy in this kind of field of research of course, gravitational waves, this is a little, the first part is a little bit boring for the people that have a more technical analogy. Uh, we know that has been uh, theorized a long time ago, and the scientist community tried to prove if this theorization was right. So that was just a modification you, have, you can have in the space time by the mass and the energy system they are in the world. So why the scientific community is so interesting about gravitational waves? Because they can give us a lot of uh, news information how uh, our universe are being formed. So from the gravitational waves system detector that can recognize now the gravitation, the GW, we have uh, almost the information they are in this time of the universe formation. But with the third generation, we want to believe, we want to wish that we can have more deep information how the universe has been formed. And maybe we can move to the origin of this process. So this will be very important for all the people. So Italy and the gravitational waves, this is a very long tradition. And I have the pleasure to mention two important physicians. One is uh, Eduardo Amaldi and Guido Pizzella, because they 
in the 70s, they start to do something on these topics, and they make the, um, what they call antennas. We will go back for this uh, term. So this antenna has been constructed, but in that time, they could not be able to recognize gravitational waves. But it was important because they form a big community of scientists that try to focus in this important part of the space research. So actually, the gravitational waves are mainly based on the use of the interferometer, most of you know. What they basically is they function is very simple. So there is a, a light emission, you have a beam splitter, so the light they goes to the mirrors, and the mirrors go back with the light beam, the light beam is fused, and you can have the light beams when this fuse can be in phase or the antiphase. But any perturbation that reach this light that's being detected could be one of the signs of the gravitational waves detection. So this is the system. The system is very sensitive if the light moves in very long arms. And most of the interferometer we have now, they have this L configuration. So they have two arms, and we see now the two examples. One of interferometer able to recognize the gravitational waves is based in USA. You have, in this case, this place, there are two interferometers, and they were the first place where in 2015 has been proved the, the Einstein theory. So they, we were able to detect the, the gravitational waves. But a little bit later, another infrastructure has been made in Europe, and especially this is based in Italy, is based in Tuscany, and this is also what is called Virgo. The first one was, is called LIGO. Virgo also detected the gravitational waves in 2017. So these three interferometers are very important because they are working together, they are collaborating, and also with the trilateral detection, they can recognize where the signal is coming. So this is based in the idea for the new moving from the second generation gravitational waves to the third one. The third one is uh, taking account of the experience of the previous one, and it could be underground, could be make it on the underground uh, situation, they should be into 200, 300 deep of the soil, and the concept is to make a, a triangle system with 10 kilometers length. So increasing the harm length, increasing the sensitivity, and the idea is to put two interferometers in one side. So this is more or less the, what is the combination that the, and the, the idea was coming. So the, the idea was coming for the results we had for the previous interferometer, they already mentioned. So they were two interferometers together. And they are, one is basically detect the low frequency and the other one is devoted to detect the high frequency and they can work in these 10 kilometers arms. So, one of the problems for this kind of a misurement is the disturbance that you have. So it's very important to avoid any interference that could become from uh, activity that you have in, when you are located these interferometers. We know already we can decrease some of this uh, uh, seismic noise or this Newton noise, making some special system, especially for the mirror, that is the very sensitive part. But the sight is so important that this is, it says, a picture of which kind of a disturbance that can be. So we go back now to the core of this contribution. So Italy is proposing a special site where we want to have this uh, third generation gravitational waves detector. And this is the place we are indicating, we are candidate is Sardinia. It is an island in the center of the Mediterranean Sea. In this case, I have a little bit some conflict of interest because I'm living, I was living in this uh, beautiful country, but uh, not exactly where the, the Einstein telescope will be made. And uh, the other competition, the competition we have in Europe, it is another proposal. This is mainly is located in the north of Europe. And here there are a collaboration between three countries, Germany, Netherlands, and Belgium. And this is the place that they are locating, they want to locate the Einstein telescope. Why Sardinia? Why Italy is proposing this site? Because it's the, a very low seismic region. 
there is a low density and there are no many activity like in enterprises, streets, and so on. So it's a very good place. This is uh, just to prove that if you see the seismic map that uh, here in Sardinia is one of the lowest seismic effects that you can recognize. And uh, there was a study we tried to compare the Sardinia site with the site in the North Europe. If you see here, the, in Sardinia, there is the lowest seismic activity. So this, uh, in terms of, of uh, uh, reduce the disturbance, the difference Sardinia seems quite uh, optimal. Of course, in science, sometimes we are competing, but we are also prone to collaborate. And uh, maybe, the new idea is that we can have in Europe two interferometers. In this case, we can change the idea. Instead of to have one interferometer by, like in the triangle shape, we can have a two L with a distance of 1,000 kilometers. And the study was showing that these two interferometers <coughs> could be the better solution to have the better instrument to detect the gravitational waves. But it's a money problem, of course, as usually. And this is more or less the cost of one Einstein telescope. If we are thinking for two, probably we need more money, but we can get better results. So we need to convince us, all the scientific, not the scientific community is already convinced, but all the governing people that could be a, a good choice. So this is the group of interest on the Einstein telescope. As you can see, it's very large. And this is the consistency of Italian people that is working this special project that Italy want to have. But of course, we are not only the ones that are looking for the gravitational waves. There are some other things that happened during this time. So there were some upgrade of the original interferometers, like Virgo and LIGO. There are, in Japan also, another interferometer stations. And there are some special missions that are devoted for the a better education. I wanted to underline that this also India is quite interesting, and the government in India has been financial, has put in money for the idea to make a LIGO India and to have India in interferometer like the other, the other countries. For the India comparison is with Italy, and in terms of gravitational waves, I was just to bring this last events we have in cooperation with the India scientific community. And uh, last April, we have a very nice workshop in Bangalore where uh, some scientists from the Italian community and the India community, they speak about an alternative ways, is to put antennas in the moon as system to detect the gravitational waves. Why this idea seems quite interesting because uh, there is uh, in the moon already a cryogenic situation that could be important, especially for the low frequency detection. And the moon doesn't have some seismic activity. And using the special part of the moon, we don't have the cosmic radiation. So this was the meeting. As you can see, there were many Indian important institutions involved. And this, uh, why we want to share this uh, knowledge, because in India with the Chandra Young tree put uh, an instrument in the moon soil to detect exactly which is the seismic activity. So we can have uh, assess a very important data that could be important for this possible proposal to put antenna in the moon. And I have the privilege to follow this workshop. It was very, very good. And also to meet some uh, very distinguished scientists from uh, India that uh, probably many of you can recognize in this picture. So I thank you for your attention and thank you for your, all your support you can give the India community for this proposal, Italian proposal for the Stein Telescope. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Leda. Now I would like to welcome Ms. Antonietta Bacanari, Trade Commissioner to India and Head of the Trade Promotion Section of Italian Embassy in New Delhi and coordinator for India, Bangladesh, and Sri Lanka, who would give us the overview of aerospace sector in Italy. Good afternoon. 
Buon pomeriggio, namaste, ladies and gentlemen. It is my honor to address you today at this Congress that that resonates with the shared value, sorry, yeah, with the shared value of Italy and India in the space journey. Special thanks to our partner, the Italian Space Agency and its president, Professor Teodore Valente, the Italian Embassy in India, its scientific attaché, Professor Sergio Leda, as well as two of the most important Italian companies in the aerospace sector, such, such as Leonardo, represented here by Mr. Roberto Pierdominici, and the Health Group, represented here by Mr. Francesco Muolo and Mr. Roberto Simonetti Sparlotta. I'm also grateful to the organizer of the India Space Congress, the SATCOM Industry Association, for putting together such a great program. Before I begin my presentation, I'd like to briefly introduce the Italian trade agency that is proud to have, be, to have been chosen as the country partner of the India Space Congress. The Italian trade agency is the government agency that supports the business development of Italian companies abroad and promotes the attraction of foreign investment in Italy. With a widespread network of 79 offices in 65 countries, the Italian Italian trade agency provides information, assistance, consulting, promotion, and training to Italian small and medium-sized businesses. The Italian trade agency offices are the ideal point of contact for companies wishing to establish business relations with Italian partners, from the procurement of Italian products to investment opportunities in Italy. In India, we have offices in New Delhi, Mumbai, Bangalore, and two foreign direct investment desks in New Delhi and Mumbai. Now, let's get back to my presentation, which will focus on the Italian space industry and the opportunities for collaboration with the, with the Indian space ecosystem. The aerospace industry plays a leading role in, the national, in our national economy. It stands out among the high-tech industry, producing innovation capable of cross-fertilizing the own supply chain between large champions and many innovative SMEs, as well as spilling out over to other, to other national industries and technology enablers. Italian aviation industry ranks four in Europe and seven in the world by size with the leadership positions in civil helicopters, regional aircraft, and propulsion. The aircraft, the aircraft spacecraft, and the related devices segment alone in 2022 accounted for a turnover of 18.4 billion euro and employed 49,000 people. The aerospace industry has demonstrated remarkable resilience in the face of the COVID-19 pandemic with the export of aircraft, spacecraft, and related devices that have exceeded pre-pandemic levels. In 2022, the sector achieved an impressive export of value of 6.6 .6 billion of euro. The Italian industry is one of the few in the world to cover the whole supply chain. Large system integrators and large companies specialize in complex system integration. About 200 small and medium-sized companies engaged in upstream and downstream activities, startups to innovate and stay ahead of new technology trends. Italy has a rich tradition in the aerospace industry. It boasts a thriving aerospace ecosystem that combines cutting-edge technology with a deep-rooted passion for exploration and discovery. What truly sets Italy apart is its comprehensive aerospace value chain, encompassing design services, aircraft system, engine production, component manufacturing, assembly, maintenance, and support services. The Italian space industry has a long story history with more than 200 space companies to have technological clusters, one national cluster, and three national associations, IPAS Association of Italian Space Companies, IA, Industrial Italia Industrial Federation for Aerospace Defense and Security, and ASAS, Association for Space-Based ICT Technology Application and Services. Italy has a very wide and well-articulated industrial value chain from upstream to downstream through midstream. It has a competitive space industry with solid and long-lasting capabilities 
from system integration, payload design, and subsystem to value-added services application. There are large system integrators, satellites, ground infrastructure, and launching systems, small system integrators, payload, and satellites of all sizes, and a vibrant and a wide community of small and medium-sized companies, including startup and spin-offs with a very good performance and an excellent potential for growth. Italy is a growing space economy and has a long relationship with, the, with the space. It began, it began in 1964 when the country launched its first satellite, the third country to do so after the USA and the Russia, if, if use of own technology is considered. Since then, the Italian space sector has grown to employee over 7,000 people, generate 1.9 billion euro in annual revenue, and counts 205 companies, of which 20% are large companies and the rest SMEs. These are, we have a lot of, the, in Italy, Italy hosts numerous key industrial players in multinational, and these are just some of the most important relevant ones activate uh, present in Italy. And as I already said, it's, uh, and as, uh, even as the president of uh, the Italian Agen Space Agency already said, Italy is one of the founders of the uh, Itali European Space Agency and is uh, one, the third contributor to the ESA, ESA budget. And it's even one of the most, of the, most uh, the country that invests the most in space, with a total amount of more than 1.7 billion euro in 2022. Moreover, a national space economy strategy plan has been, strategic plan has been defined to broaden and use space systems, products, and application in non-space markets and push Italian industrial system towards the space, the, the new space economy. The National Recovery and Resilience Plan foresee directly related investment in satellite technologies and the space economy for a total amount of 3.75 billion of total investment. And just this to give you some idea, Italian companies, university and research centers actively participate in European research programs as well as in the national and regional ones whose objectives for aeronautics are sustainability, eco-compatibility, and digitalization. Research and development expenditure in 2022 was over 2 billion euro. Italy has got an excellent scientific production, production and it ranks amongst the top 10 countries for aerospace, engineering, and space and planetary science. This is just very quickly some of the public and research and development center that we already mentioned by the President Volante. And then there is some of the aerospace events taking place in the following months. So just save to your calendar, not only the International Council of the Aeronautical Science Congress in September in Florence, and most of all, and as I already said, the International Astronautical Congress taking place in October in Milan. And last but not least, the new space economy taking place in December in Rome. So, that's the question. Why partner with the Italian aerospace industry? Because what we are looking for is a partnership with our Indian counterparts. First of all, we can say that thanks to its logistic infrastructure, Italy is well connected to the main European aerospace countries and, to, and even to extra-European countries in the North Africa and the South and East Asia. But what is a, a very particular situation Character, character of Italy, is the, which is, is a highly specialized in cluster and district, in districts. We have the National Aerospace Technological Cluster, which is an aggregation of the main regional technological districts, industrial research players in the aeronautical and space sector, the Italian Space Agency and the AIA, the Italian Aerospace Defense and Security Federation, with the aim of implementing a strategy based on research and innovation for the competitiveness of the Italian aerospace sector. Each regional technological dis district has its own specific strengths with highly specialized businesses aimed at developing innovative technologies in the aerospace sector. 
just to mention some, Lazio Aerospace Technology District, its expertise includes, among the others, launchers, micro nano satellite selection, space surveillance and tracking, manned and managed space exploration, safety and securities, homeland, some security. Lombardia uh, Aerospace Cluster counts more than 220 companies. 60 and a, a turnover and a turnover with of 6 billion and the three complete supply chain in a three flight platform fixed wing rotary wing and vertical flight satellites part for space use scientific payloads for earth, for earth observation and space exploration just to mention this is just to mention some of them what offer even Italy? What offer more? Offer Italy offers a very specialized human resources, and uh, Italian university are interesting partners for customized research and training activities. More, it's even uh, offer highly competitive labor costs compared to other European countries. So why Italy is the perfect flat platform for aerospace? Is uh, Italy is the perfect partner for Indian companies and investors, th thanks to a strong industrial base, the presence of key players, reliable suppliers, and potential industrial partners, a high level of research and innovation, skilled human resources at competitive cost, unique research and testing infrastructure, and availability of business opportunities, support services, and incentives. So what's, uh, what's going on in the next few months? Uh, we are very happy to be here this, today at the, at, the, at the India Space Congress, and we will be happy to be next week from the 1st of July to the 3rd of July to the Aeromart at Hyderabad, uh, and uh, we invite all of you, if uh, it happens to, do, to, to be there, to meet us, as we will be there to meet other Indian counterparts. And as already said, we are planning to organize an institutional and trade mission to India, bringing together the, the Italian Space Agency, the other industrial association active in the space sector in Italy, big companies and SMEs, and why not even startups and innovative companies, to meet together in a, in a sort of a roadshow through India to further discover opportunities of collaboration and partnership between our countries. So we are planning to go it's to Hyderabad, New Delhi, maybe Bangalore, Ahmedabad, we'll see. But we will be happy to have a, a great tour of India. So to conclude, I'm confident with the today's seminar there will be more synergies between India and Italy in the spec sector, paving the way for collaboration and knowledge exchange, further enriching our partnership. The collaboration between India and Italian space industry holds the promise of unlocking new frontier for success. Together, we can propel the space industry to greater heights, fostering economic development and shaping a brighter future. We have come a long way, and now we are ready to take the next giant leap together. Thank you. Thank you, Antonetta. Now I would like to leave the floor to Italian companies who will testify their contribution to the aerospace industry. I would like to leave the floor to Mr. Roberto Pierdominici, Managing Director of Leonardo Aerospace Defense and Security India Private Limited. Good afternoon. Namaste. First of all, in behalf of the Leonardo Management, let me thank the organizer of this uh, uh, and the Italian trade uh, agency for, uh, for this opportunity, which is for us very important. I have to say that Professor uh, Valente and uh, the Director uh, Macanardi already done my job, because they were speaking about uh, the main uh, industry in Italy, and they were speaking about the main project in the space, which are, uh, of course, uh, in which uh, Leonardo is, is involved. A few words on, uh, on the company, then I will be focused on the, on the, um, on the space. Uh, we are... Uh, the biggest, as uh, Antonietta says, we are the biggest industry in, uh, in Italy, defense, aerospace, security, and uh, cyber, uh, and uh, we can do everything. We are involved in the main important project in, uh, in Europe and worldwide, not only for the space, but also for the aeronautics. In the space, we can get 
but see this so I think it's jump okay this is one uh, it was it was on the at the bottom okay we have uh, as I say we have uh, uh, the full control of the domain we have uh, uh, our, our domain land domain maritime domain and now we have also space domain the company is uh, big. We have uh, more than 53,000 people worldwide. Uh, we consider ourselves as a four main uh, domestic uh, market, which are Italy, of course, US, where we uh, own a DLS company. Uh, United Kingdom, we are proud to say that we are the second defense uh, industry in the United uh, in UK, and Poland, where we own also some uh, companies there. Um, 150 countries, we are present in 150 countries, and more important, we have uh, a lot of uh, uh, collaboration and shareholding. And uh, just to mention the one that has been already mentioned, we are in the Thales uh, Arena Space, uh, joint venture with Thales. We are uh, uh, in the Avio, Avio is the already mentioned uh, also Avio, and uh, Telespazio. So we are uh, again the, the, the three main. Um, company mentioned by uh, our my, my colleagues uh, uh, belongs or in uh, at least uh, are part of uh, Leonardo we have uh, 15,000 billion uh, sorry 15 billion year, uh, euro uh, revenues uh, and uh, uh, we belongs 30 percent to the Italian government uh, economic uh, government this is because uh, the Italian government want to take control of the uh, defense system and the uh, intellectual property right uh, in those uh, 15 billion, uh, we uh, spend 2.2 billion for research and development, which is a quite a huge amount of money because uh, the company believes that uh, we must be always at the top of the technology, the state of the art. So, how we invest this money? We invest the money with the labs. We have uh, uh, more than uh, 11 corporate labs and 200 uh, researchers uh, uh, in, uh, in 2023. All the labs are, of course, as you can see, uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, we have uh, uh, futuristic technology. We have uh, sensing uh, uh, any kind of uh, space technology. Any kind of new technology has been uh, under the control of Leonardo. is is a, a part of our research and development. So this was the company review. Now uh, space. Talking about the space. Uh, space uh, is uh, very more, uh, much more important. It's becoming very much more important for Leonardo. As you can see in the center of the slide, you have Leonardo, which is uh, uh, the space business unit. Space business unit that now is becoming uh, the division, space division of Leonardo. This because the importance of the space is going up in the in the worldwide. Uh, Leonardo DNS uh, in the United States is owned by uh, Leonardo. Is, uh, they are doing some activity in the in the space field. Avio already mentioned for the for the launcher. Telespazio, 76 uh, percent is uh, held by uh, Leonardo through Space Alliance and Thales Alliance Space, which uh, uh, Thales. What we do, everything. <laughs> I'm proud to say that we really do everything. Through our uh, control, uh, control company or directed by uh, Leonardo, we can do, uh, we can define the mission, the response of interest in Alena Space. We can do satellite manufacturing, Alenia and, uh, sorry, Leonardo and Thales Alenia. We can do the ground segment manufacturing uh, through uh, Telespazio, launch and manufacturing, Telespazio and Davio, Telespazio for the operations and uh, the control of the mission. Uh, then we have clouds, IPC, cyber done, done by uh, Leonardo. Telespazio for the network and platform together with Leonardo. And then we have also application and services. So the full uh, range of activities linked to the space is, control, is uh, part of the uh, business for Leonardo. We do. I have to say thanks to, again, to Professor Valente, which mentioned the major national and international space mission our equipment are in uh, on board. We are involved on this. We can provide, again, system and solution. We can provide payloads, equipment and payloads. We have cyber security, which is uh, very important, uh, not only for the ground, but also for the space. And we can have also uh, orbiting uh, infrastructure. Satellite communication, satellite system operation. You can see any kind of uh, uh, activity is covered by, by Leonardo uh, with, the, with the, the Leonardo Space Division or the uh, control system. 
we do navigation, we do really everything. We can also do uh, satellite data and we can, uh, uh, we are on Cleo, so we are in uh, Igeos, so we are, uh, as I said, you mentioned all the, all the major projects in which uh, Leonardo is involved. We can do some very special products for the satellite, such as the atomic clock. We produce one of the most uh, precise atomic clock in the world. We, then we have uh, capability for satellites and, and, and probe, and uh, we have a lot of uh, also payloads to be, to be installed on the, on the, on the um, satellite. For what concerns the uh, service and capability, we can do robotics, robotics and drilling, already mentioned by, by Professor Valente. We have ele electro-optic technology, and we have also laser transmitter very high resolution payload, the weight is less than 95 kilos, high space spectral payload, weight and less than 100 kilos, and uncooled uh, TIR camera, which is less than 20 kilos. So those are our compact payload for satellite. Again, uh, cyber security, I was a mention, uh, a few years ago, we decided to create the cyber and security division of uh, Leonardo, who uh, at that time was starting the business in the cyber security. We can provide cyber security academy, we can provide design for the cyber security and uh, uh, any kind of uh, capability for also for this. We are again involved in the, in the, main, uh, in the main project in Europe. We can do uh, satellite uh, uh, probes, mentioned already, and uh, orbiting modules. Everything. Everything, every main uh, important project and uh, program uh, running around the world in the space uh, see the uh, participation of Leonardo. Uh, has been already mentioned uh, by, by Professor Valente, most of them. So we are in this field since uh, really the, the beginning. So we have a very good experience. Before closing, before saying thank you, what I want to say is that uh, we are here in India uh, with uh, the subsidiary, uh, Leonardo Aerospace Defense and, Capability and um, Security India. We are uh, working with the Indian Armed Forces since uh, the early 90s. So we started to do production in India much before the Making India uh, policy. We are open to, to collaborate with the Indian Indians. We are looking for partners, we are looking for opportunities, and we are really willing to go as Leonardo India and uh, uh, to make this field the most important field in, uh, in this country. Thank you, thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Pier Dominici. Now I would like to welcome Mr. Francesco Muolo, Head of Space Program of VLT Group. pleasure and an honor for me to be here. In this uh, short presentation, I'm going to introduce uh, my company, ELT. It is a company profile in this office in, in India. Then we're going to see the relevance of the electromagnetic spectrum uh, for space. And in the last uh, section, we're going to see uh, how are programs in the space sector. So this is uh, uh, a quick slide in which we have uh, the company portfolio. Health Group is a company based in Italy with more than 70 years of experience in electromagnetic uh, uh, warfare and electromagnetic spectrum monitoring. So we have some product as uh, the countermeasure and self-protection for Eurofighter for Italy Aviation, or uh, we have a SIGINT intelligent products. We cover all the domains from uh, land to naval to airship system. We cover also the cyber domain and of course the space domain that we're gonna see later. We have also a company that cover biodefense solution. Health Group in India has one office in Delhi open since 2008 and another, another office in Bangalore. He's cooperating with the DRDO uh, for co-development and qualification of a W system for MiG-29 and currently is uh, supplying the same the W system for uh, the Indian Air Force on MiG-29 in co-production with Bell. Uh, no, now jump to the relevance of space in everyday application. Uh, as said before, we have many missions 
that uh, can be used can be very useful for health observation, satcom, and navigation. All of these are enabled by uh, electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, for example, for health observation, uh, sen uh, the electromagnetic spectrum is uh, core for the sensing application. Let's uh, think about SAR or similar mission. Or, uh, for example, in, the, in SATCOM, we have the crucial uh, role of uh, the, the electromagnetic spectrum for that exchange from satellite to ground and vice versa. And uh, how to not uh, to consider the navigation capability given by global navigation system that uh, is uh, in uh, everyday life of my, uh, or in every, in every hour smartphone uh, that bring it home every day. So uh, we have to consider that space uh, is also vulnerable because uh, uh, there are many potential trends uh, that can have soft effects and hard effects on our satellite, our mission. Just uh, to take a look at some of them, we can have deception, jamming, spoofing, or a uh, cyber attack on satellite that can um, uh, make vulnerable this type of application. But something can be done. And just jumping, we can say that uh, we can uh, develop, uh, for example, uh, cyber resilience payload and cyber resilience spacecraft that can uh, protect the platform from malware and take over from, uh, from attack. And also we can, uh, for example, protect the ground network and the user network. Um, this uh, could also be enhanced by uh, a grid situation awareness uh, by spectrum monitoring, so we can uh, keep tracking uh, with uh, a payload on a satellite the, the emitters on, uh, on Earth. We can locate and we can find so potential threat that can jam or spoof our satellite. So this uh, introduction helped me to explain what we have done uh, the, the program of my company in the space. In particular, uh, we have. Uh, um, one of the most uh, electromagnetic spectrum acquisition and monitoring uh, mission now launched from 15 of April 23. And this is called Scorpio. Uh, this is a payload entirely designed by Health. It is the, uh, capable of a wide spectrum surveillance. It was launched with the, the mission Transport 7 of Falcon 9. And uh, it is specifically designed it's very compact, it can be um, installed on very small satellite. So this, is, uh, this kind of payload is enabled uh, to, um, to, to grant some kind of mission, such uh, as SIGINT, that is a particular application of uh, situational awareness and spectrum monitoring, in which we're going to capture uh, the emitters transmitted from Earth we're going to get it to the ground through the satellite link to the ground segment. We can process the data in the space control room and we can elaborate some library and a database of the potential threats and potential emitters. All this, uh, all this uh, instrument can be um, integrated with other sensors because the satellite, the electromagnetic uh, spectrum monitoring is a, uh, has a wide uh, SWAT on Earth, and so it can identify, easily identify the threats that can later be uh, spotted by a camera or by a SAR mission. And all that can be worked together. Let me say, uh, uh, this type of approach is, can be integrated also with the high altitude platform system, but uh, we don't take a deep dive on that because it's under the line of Kalman, and so it's not space for, uh, for the definition. And what can we say? We have also uh, some other programs related to the navigation. Navigation, as we say, is very critical and is a very sensible uh, type of signal. And so we have uh, two programs uh, to start to protect the platform and this GSNSS receiver. It is based on a specific antenna that can uh, protect from jamming and spoofing in blind mode of operation. And we have two similar program, one for the space segment that is called NavGuard, and one for the land segment that is called Geode. 
Last but not least, we have also a program in Antisar, Gemming. So this is a picture of a town in Italy uh, from space. This is uh, how it looks uh, in a SAR satellite. If we have a, gentle, if we have a sensitive uh, application or uh, a platform in this area, we can install a zenital jammer, for example, in the red dot, and that should be the result of uh, the acquisition of the satellite. So we can protect uh, some asset and some sensitive uh, place on Earth. Uh, in conclusion, I want to say that uh, we are um, full capable of working with payload in space, and we can provide the training and co-development and co-production for space payload in the electromagnetic spectrum monitoring. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Muolo. Now the floor is open for the question and answer round. Do we have some questions? Great. So that means we explain ourselves very well. We would like to thank you everyone on behalf of Italian Space Agency and Italian Trade Agency. And thank you once again to all the panelists. Thank you. Can we have uh, you all over here? Thank you for the wonderful presentation. I would now request Dr. Subarao to present over the mementos and the bags to each one of you and request for a picture with him as well, right? Can we have another round of applause for a lovely session and also a uh, beautiful alliance between Italian and Indian space? Thank you everyone to the main CBR hall, the crystal ball room, for tea and coffee networking session at 4 and uh, 4.30 and then followed by the closing plenary. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, followed by the closing plenary at the main crystal ball room happening from 5 p.m. onwards. So request everyone to uh, vacate the room and be there.